Welcome to the final game of the regular season. Cascade Valley's out here trying to make some magic happen right now. And things, honestly, are kind of looking up for us. Far City Club, welcome back to the class against Purdue. is trying to see if they can spoil our season. We have an inkling, an outside of a chance, that it's going to be difficult to make it to potentially the college football playoffs yet again. Robinson in a QB right now. We got a little bit of a wrinkle going up here. Robinson looking for something. Finds his guy, Sean Stewart. Sean Stewart looking to break some ankles, and he does pick up about seven and making the third and short. This is going to be an incredibly tough game, though. We're in the snow. We're playing at Purdue. Purdue has found their way to be the spoiler makers on some sort against us before. But if we can find a way to win this game, we definitely put ourselves with an opportunity to get in there in the college football playoffs. But if you want to see the full picture of how close or far away we are, wait until halftime. Offense absolutely looking fantastic right now. McDonald makes a quick little adjustment here. Sees his guy across the middle is Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson finding plenty of room, and he's inside down to the 15. First down here, McDonald and company ready to go. Quick little drop. Jeremy Willis falls down, gets his composure back up, and he gets 11. Offense absolutely looking flawless right now. You love to see. This is how you want to start a game and let the defense know you came to play. Good Lord, Sean Stewart died. Stewart hit pretty hard there, so Robinson comes in to spell him a little bit. Robinson again, finding his way these last couple of weeks, becoming an important part of this offense. The Juco transfer looking better and better each week. Our squad has honestly looked pretty abysmal in terms of defensively. These last couple of weeks, schemes have not looked good. Tackling has not looked good. Coverage definitely has not looked good. But for those that are wondering, Mike Hemphill still out this week. He's trying to give it a go, but he doesn't really feel fully, or feel fully comfortable to actually get out on the field, especially in a snow game coming off that partially torn MCL. And if we're being perfectly honest, I don't blame that dude at all. He is in the NFL future of being one of the greatest NFL cornerbacks we've possibly ever seen. Why would you risk it in a game that maybe doesn't mean anything? That being said, we'd obviously would still love to see Mike Hemphill suited up at least one more time here for Cascade Valley. But again, that's not really our decision. That's his at this point. Even though it is Purdue, the defense is looking much better so far in today's game. Quarterback takes his time. He's got a lot of time here. We've got great coverage. He throws it off his back foot. That one's incomplete from bowling. And we're going to see fourth down. You'd love to see Tom Baker having a little bit of opportunity to return one here. Not exactly a great pun. The cold air obviously start that one a little bit lower than we probably wanted. Baker trying to outrun the coverage, gets to about the 40-yard line on a 10-yard return. This offense absolutely looked good on that first drive, but the pressure is absolutely on for Patrick McDonald's shoulders. There's rumors of a position switch, potential transfer. People are really interested to see what happens with him in the next couple of weeks going into the offseason. Warren Fulwood's going to come in this upcoming season with the strongest arm we've ever seen in team history. He also is one of the fastest players, if not the fastest player we have ever seen in school history. And people want to know what is going to happen to Mr. McDonald. The decision on that, honestly, he hasn't been made at this point. We know that McDonald is a five-star player. We do not want to lose him in any way. Second and 19, McDonald takes a pretty bad sack there. McDonald feels the pressure again, fumbles this one, tried to get rid of it, couldn't quite do it. Johnson was going to pick it up, and Lord, we lost nine and then lost 17 in the play after. Third and 43, or lay long, as the French say. This one feels pretty much impossible. McDonald rolling, throws it out of bounds, and... You can say we're punting it. Terrible news, though, for us. We see Chris Johnson have back spasms right now. But the good news is we actually have pretty good depth uh, across the offensive line with guys that can play multiple positions. So we're going to sub him out, and we'll see him later if he's feeling better. Purdue back with a rock. Bowling in the backfield. Feels a little bit panic here, but Nate Ward comes through with a big sack. Pause if needed. Lost a six there. Second and 16 now. Our guys all over the field. Shackleford with a huge hit. But if he just played the ball, that might have been a pick. Big third down. We're going to play the pass. Short yardage conversion territory. They actually go deep on this one. We're seeing our guys get caught up looking in the backfield. And 85, Casey Mobley gets 39. Bowling's starting to feel pretty comfortable right now. We didn't really do anything on our last drive. And now he's coming out here, see what he can do. And look at this. Steven Lowe gets the tackle. But before that, George Fry got embarrassed. At the very beginning of this game, Joe Keller, their starting running back, set the all-time record for most rushing yards in a career at Purdue and look at Hancock this time inside the 10 our guys are getting burned that's Bernard Harvey with the back coverage after looking incredible on that first drive we are looking abysmal here in the second one Bowling tries to get out to the edge he has a legion of blockers and seven yards later he's in the end zone and this game's tied up 25 seconds left here in the first quarter and this is not how you want things to go a slow start for the offense the defense breaking down after that first drive it was great and we got to put points on the board. Purdue has never been an easy team to face, and we're finding that again this week as they're putting up a heck of a competition against us right now. Well, third and short, Anthony Miner slides over. He's going to have a great block here. Another great block this time from Riley. Look at Sean Stewart getting out here for a huge gain. The stiff farmer is going to get him a little extra yards. 32 big ones there. Love what you see there. And again, that is why Sean Stewart's up there at the top of the Heisman list for pretty much the entire season. 
Anthony Miners out here, one of the most underrated players in Cascade Valley history. He's going to get a 30-yard touchdown run, a great throw for McDonald, an even better route by Miner. So the defense might be having their moments and some issues here. We're seeing the offense step up big. After, again, a drive that didn't go great for them, they step up. We get points to the board. Now the defense starting off strong, and Rutler's going to tackle for loss. Steven Logan pulled over in coverage. George Fry. The lone blitzing linebacker we have here trying to get a little bit of pressure on the edge. They go wide open across the middle. We have no one there until Jonas Shackelford and company bring him down. That was the second grab of the game by Casey Mobley. He only has two of them, but he's averaging 29 yards per reception. That's just absolutely filthy, and we cannot let this man do that. Jamal Bowling's definitely given us fits these past couple of seasons, and he's doing it right here again. He goes up the middle this time. James Mitchell on the tackle, but it's a little too late. Crowded backfield for Purdue. They send the guy up the middle. Bass is there. Bass gets absolutely run over by Busby. Imagine letting a dude with the last name Busby run you over. Revoke his scholarship. Purdue comes right back again. Super crowded backfield. Multiple guys back there ready to get some big yards. Fry's going to come in. Can't get the tackle when Bass this time brings down Busby. A little dangerous here. Man coverage. are pressing a little bit, especially on the edge. You got a guy open across the middle. We have a guy wide open on the edge. Keller is wide open. Demel Hill gets torched, and then we see the hit by George Fry, but it's too little, too late. Keller, he's in the end zone. With the first half sort of winding down now, it feels disgustingly weird to have our offense bailing out our defense. It's been mostly different most of the season. Second and seven. Sean Stewart, who's been, again, our best guy through the air this year. Coming out here, making people pay. What another move. Those moves get himself so many more yards. McDonald has absolutely looked great today. Only one incomplete pass in the afternoon. You got to love it. Speaking of McDonald, has a guy super deep. He's going to hit Anthony Miner again. He's going to get a good block here. Miner is still moving, and he's down to the six-yard line. Are you kidding me? This connection's insane today. Miner was leaking down the middle of the field. Didn't really have an opportunity to get him when we initially wanted him, but good Lord, did he come back, eyes in the back of his head, and find a way to get us in good position. Sean Stewart's still a little gas at the moment. We're seeing Robinson come in. Robinson goes up the middle. Robinson gets his second rushing touchdown of the game, but we will take it by whoever can get in the end zone. Because we're going to need it against Purdue right now. The defense has their work cut out for him right now. They're holding on to a seven point lead but it's not really by anything that they've done positive and look at Fowler he was there but he couldn't get the interception or deflection it honestly is starting to feel like the news of Mike Hemphill not playing this week has really hurt morale especially on the defensive side because these guys just feel like they aren't even playing the right sport not having Hemphill out here is honestly like losing your quarterback on defense it's going to be tough without him but we're trying to get the job done they're throwing one across the middle Demel Hill absolutely lost and Casey Mobley again Big play after big play. Things just absolutely continue to get tough at the moment. We got our guys out here trying to get to him. Rex is going to get nine, maybe 10 yards on that play. Big play here. Bowling throws across the middle. What a grab by Julian Rex again. Our guys honestly just looking to make a stop right now. Keller, this the lone guy in the backfield. Now Arneson moves back out there as well. They go to the left side. We have no one ready for that one. And Keller, he's in the end zone yet again. The number six team in the nation is struggling. Struggling against a three-win team. It's late in the season. It's tough. It honestly is tough. But Anthony Miner is the most tough player to guard right now on the field. His last name might say Miner, but the man is playing major in this game's offensive scheme at the moment. Two minutes left here in the first half. Sean Stewart stretching it out to the right-hand side. That's been incredibly kind to him today. He's going to get another big game. This one's going to be about 20 to 25 yards. To be honest, I have nothing bad to say about the offense at the moment. Offensive line can maybe block a little bit better in some scenarios, but overall, this team has been very good. RJ Rowley moves up the sideline. Love to see that. Got a couple of guys missing, and all of a sudden, we're down inside the three. At this point, it feels like we maybe scored a little bit too fast. Robinson's still here in the backfield. He scored every rushing touchdown today, and he gets his third of the afternoon. Sean Stewart, I know this man is our Heisman contender, but right now, we're just fighting to stay alive and win this game. Okay, we'll take it. Switching a little bit of a zone coverage. We need our guys to just do something better than what they've done at the moment. We need to force a turnover at this point, too. Purdue calls their first time out there. They got second and four with a minute and eight seconds left. Bowling's out here trying to run, but up the middle, we've got him. A second sack of the game. That sack came from Corey Brown, his first of the afternoon, his first tackle of the afternoon right now. 30 seconds left here. Purdue wasting the clock a little bit in case they don't get this third down. Weird, if you ask me, but it is what it is. Got a couple of guys eligible here. They go across the middle, and unbelievable. Hancock's open for an 18-yarder. Purdue kind of shoots himself in the foot here. They use their second timeout. They have one timeout left. They only have 20 seconds now and about half the field to go. If they hadn't really done that, if they had just went for the initial call, they would have been fine and had plenty of time, but they wasted 30 seconds. They're moving back to the line of scrimmage. I don't know why they just didn't burn their last time out, but they're going with this. They go with a check down to their halfback. We hit him as time expires. We're going to go with a halftime up seven, and the halftime report will give you a lot of great info, but good Lord, we got to play better in the second half.
Welcome back to the halftime show. We've had a great game so far, but it's time to dive into some of the recruiting updates and more. Now, we currently have nine scholarships remaining. And just so you know, we actually have nine players that are actively recruiting right now. Some people have become new to the board. We've got Braden Willis, who we're trying to get is 83 overall center. Uh, Jaquez Ness, who we're still trying to land right now. We're getting pretty close into the top four. Anthony Odiari, who we have a lot of stuff to do. But let's talk about the recruits we designed. Antonio Vaughn, an 80 overall athlete. Again, looking at his stats really quickly. This dude can do a lot of different things, but I think he He's probably going to end up being a wide receiver, but we'll figure that out. But this guy still 85 throw power, 91 throw accuracy. If we didn't already have Warren Fullwood, this dude might be a contender at QB. We signed a punter because obviously our incredible punter is going to be leaving after the season. Not exactly a top tier punter, but still a guy that will get the job done. We don't punt a lot. Ernest Hamilton, another tackle we signed. Good strength. Decent pass block and run block and impact blocking. We have Brandon Holt, another athlete, the number four recruit that we got from the previous week. Good speed and acceleration. You can play a couple different positions, probably more than likely on the defensive side of the ball. But again, we'll figure things out when the time comes. And with the signing of those four players, we officially are the number three team in the recruiting ball. Still nine scholarships and plenty of people to try to ultimately land if we can kind of try to get some of those guys plus the all season recruiting. But still being in the top three at this stage, that's a W. From a top 25 poll standpoint, obviously, you know, they were ranking number six in the college football playoff rankings. But Boise State, who's facing number 23 Air Force this week, you have Ole Miss playing Mississippi State. You have Florida, number three against number eight, Oklahoma. That's a big game, has a lot of implications. You have Miami, four, Texas at five. Again, us at six with Oklahoma, North Carolina, Arkansas, and Nebraska in your top 10. As long as we take care of business here against Purdue, things will be fine. But you have to imagine if Oklahoma somehow upsets Florida, they probably leapfrog us due to the sort of the strength of the schedule at that point. If Florida wins, it's going to be tough. Basically, we need some major upsets to happen in order for us to get in there because if you look at our conference standings, it's going to be tough for us to get past. In the conference game, we obviously lost to Nebraska, so Nebraska holds a tiebreaker against us. They're 6-0 in the division, 7-1 in the conference. They obviously have a pretty tough game. Uh, this week, I believe, a ranked opponent in number 21, Iowa. But still, even if they lost that game, I believe they still hold a tiebreaker and they beat us out. From a Heisman perspective, though, Sean Stewart is still absolutely killing it. 138 in the ground last week with a touchdown, 23 yards to the air. He has been a complete back dominating. Leads us in rushing, leads us in receiving. This dude has literally done it all. And with us being down to the final week of the regular season before conference play and everything comes into play here, we are scheduled currently to face UNC, who's currently number seven in the uh, PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. That is not the end of the world because all the injuries we've had to still make it to this point, that's a heck of a job by Coach Mervin McMurvin. So as you saw in the halftime report, so many great signings. Four recruits signing officially last week, and we're hoping we get a couple more. Nine scholarships left. We're hoping we can use all nine of those here pretty soon. But Matthew Fowler, we want him to use all ten of his fingers because he could have picked it if he did. Bowling back and shotgun again, knowing his team needs to get some sort of momentum here. They go right back to Joe Keller, who has been electric today, making it third in inches. Third down. Barely any yards to go. They go with a handoff of the middle. Corey Brown is there, and we're going to see our guys hit Keller, but he falls forward and gets the first. Games against Cascade Valley, these teams that barely win, they know they have an opportunity. I mean, look, at the last game of the year, they know they've got an opportunity now to do one thing and one thing only. Spoil a season for a team trying to get into the college football playoffs. Bowling all by his lonesome in the backfield. Second and 11, he's going to send Mobley over to the right-hand side. Obviously, we're going to keep our eye on that. They throw one deep, testing Matthew Fowler. Fowler looks completely lost out there. Hill can't make a tackle. Shackleford can't. Mitchell finally does, but it's 58 yards by a dude whose name is Keith Walton. He's got to be 67 and retired. Heartbreaking play after boneheaded play. It just keeps on pouring right now. And now we're going to run their fullback up the middle. Tommy Arneson, he's tying this game up. If there's one thing I can say going into next season, it is that nobody, and I mean nobody's job is going to be safe, especially on defense. We're obviously going to have a lot of major challenges on offense, especially on the receiving side, because we have so many new faces that are going to be there. We have three senior receivers that are all going to be leaving after this year. With how talented our QB room is going to be, I have absolutely no fears at all about how productive the offense will be in some way or form. Second and seven, Stewart, little play action fake here. Got a couple guys we obviously love to hit, but we're struggling a little bit. We're going to have to get rid of that one. It's not worth throwing a pass. That could be intercepted. Time players made big time plays. Here we are in third down. Minor finding ways to get open the entirety of today's game. It's huge. Well over 100 yards and counting for him. Right at the middle here, going with Sean Stewart. Stewart trying to find those gaps again. It's been a little bit tough in the traditional ground game, but we still produce multiple touchdowns. I mean, I feel bad for Stewart that he hasn't gotten any of those rushing touchdowns, but still he's had a productive game. Robinson of the middle hasn't really done much outside of get those couple of yards for the end zone. This dude's got like 10 yards rushing or 12 yards rushing on six attempts. Big opportunity here, third and three. 
Donald's out here rolling. He's got his guy. He throws it late, and he can't throw where it needs to be. Perry's going to pick that one off. He's got plenty of room. The tackle comes in from Baker. And if McDonald just leads his guy the way he needs to, it's a touchdown. But because he throws it behind, it's going the other way. Coach Mervin McMervin was seeing the sidelines, just smacking his young player's shoulder pads, saying, you've got to think. You have to just make those plays. You cannot come out here and throw plays that don't work out for your team like that because we need those in a close inside game. Purdue, though, feeling that momentum. They know they have an opportunity here to make something big happen for their school, for their season. While they only have three wins, that number four win they could possibly get here would be huge. Switch things up a little bit. Fry watching the middle. They go with a delayed run. George Fry flips a guy upside down, and that's going to make it fourth and two. Are you kidding me? What a play. I don't think we've seen Purdue punt the football since the first drive of today's game, so it feels incredible to have an opportunity here to return a punt with Tom Baker, one of the most dangerous people on the field whenever he touches the football. Not really the block, and we need Nova, so eight yards is eight yards. Stewart going right back to get the football here. Again, the interception by McDonald means the run game is a little bit more prevalent. Second and five here. Donald hands it off to Stewart, who stumbles a little bit, but does get two. Third and three could potentially be four down territory for the team. A guy immediately comes through the middle. Over the top, what a throw by McDonald. Baker's going to get 18 in the first. Minor in the back though this time to help out Stewart. Trying to pick up some of those extra blockers there. A nice run there by Stewart for seven. Robinson spelling out Stewart here a little bit. He's been a little bit slow to act today just because, again, running in the snow as much as he has and touching the football as much, it gets to be a lot. That might be the best run we've seen from Robinson all game, though. A huge gain to pick up that first. Back out here. McDonald holding on to it. To the last second, pitches out to Tom Baker, who is in the end zone. An 18-yard touchdown run. Tom Baker, the man that does it all, receiving punt returns, rushing touchdowns, sometimes even a passing play here and there gets the lead back. Can the defense come out here and get two stops on back-to-back -back drives? That's a huge question right now that we've been unable to answer. Mobley slides in the backfield this time. They hand it off and immediately we see Keller lose one. Nate Ward has been playing great today. He's got about five tackles, a sack, a couple tackles for a loss today. This dude's been stepping up big. As a corner, being in the backfield as much as he has, you'd love to see it. Over the top, though, we're seeing our guys blow their coverage. It's Fowler who has had an abysmal game. Coming into the season, I would have thought that Matthew Fowler was a bona fide, guaranteed first rounder. After how he's played so far this season, I don't know if he's going in the first two rounds. The potential is absolutely there for Fowler, but what he actualizes is just not always what he essentially needs to do. And it is tough to watch that week in and week out. Sometimes Matthew Fowler is the best player on the entire field. And some weeks he's a guy that you don't know if he could crack your top five corner list on a double A team. It's tough. Big opportunity here. Third down to six yards. Can Purdue come in clutch? They go from underneath, Rob, what a hit. Fowler must have hurled that talker from Coach Murphy McMurphy because that is a huge hit to force fourth down. Purdue's going to opt to go for it here. Fourth and short. Bowling's going to keep this one. He tries to go around, but up the middle, we get a big hit. Demel Hill, I believe, on that tackle forces a turnover on downs. We've got the Rock, 648 left on the clock with the lead. It's time to pound the Rock a little bit and make sure that we get in the end zone on this drive. Stewart in the backfield. Safety slides up a little bit. Stewart looking for some blocks, doesn't really quite get what he needs, and he loses two yards. Major play here, third down and nine. We need the yards. Can we ultimately get him? McDonald's out here scrambling. McDonald's actually got an opportunity here. McDonald is going to get the nine yards that he needs. And with that first down, we're going to start chewing the clock a little bit. Robinson in for Stewart. He's taking this, tries to find a gap, doesn't really find much, but one is better than nothing. Even a field goal in this drive, if we can waste some more time like this, would be massive. McDonald, though, can't get rid of that one, and it makes it third and nine. Even worse than it being third down and nine as we stop the clock with that incomplete pass. But here, we're going to try to ultimately go for it. Sending one of our, actually two of our guys deep. One of them we didn't want to. We see Miner. Miner. Oh, no. Galloway's going to pick it off. He jumped the route. And Purdue has the rock right back. Miner has been absolutely torching this entire game, but we threw to him one too many times on a similar route, and Purdue was all over it. Bowling has all the time in the world. Throws one to Garrett. Garrett's going to get that one. Fowler's trying to catch up to him. He does, and they're inside the 10 now. First and goal. At the start of this game, we were worried about just making sure that we, you know, put up enough points to make sure that we look good to the voters. But now I'm worried about even winning this game, which is becoming increasingly tough. Fry hits bowling. His leg goes crazy, but he stays up to make a second and goal. We haven't really forced the turnover, and now would be a fantastic time to do so. Pretty heavy formation this time. Bowling goes in completely untouched. Unbelievably perfect blocking there. And we got a tie game of four minutes left. Things are about to get incredibly spicy. We need a touchdown on this drive. A field goal would be great, but honestly, I'm just wanting a touchdown at this point. And to be honest, I don't really trust our defense to not give up major points if they have the ball 
going against them at this time. And Sean Stewart has been great. Get this man in the end zone. Donald going right back here to the read option. It's been fairly successful today. Goes up the middle. A big gain, and he's got it. Looks to be 17. Safety sliding up a little bit. Feels like they know what play we're running. Baker slides in the backfield. We're going to ultimately keep this one. We could have pitched that one out, but again, too risky. We'll take the guaranteed yards. 2.30 left. We're getting to a point where we can probably start chewing some clock a little bit, but at this point, I'm going to wait before we get a little bit closer before we do something of that nature. Sean Stewart is about to get run down by the biggest number two I've ever seen in my entire life. Getting close to two minutes left in the game. We have a new set of downs to work with. Things are going so well on our side. And Sean Stewart, what another good gain. All he has done is eat up major yards despite not getting in the end zone. Robbins is spelling Stewart here. In under two minutes, Robinson's got plenty of room. The main goal is to stay in bounds, but he cannot do that. A little fella gets thrown out of bounds to stop the clock. With where we are now, though, we can absolutely chew the clock. We want Purdue to have to wait a couple of those timeouts. Getting in the end zone right now isn't exactly our priority. Robinson comes back in here. He's been in the end zone three times. Can he make it four today? He cuts back up a little bit. Robinson running like a madman inside the 20. This dude has been insane. His fourth rushing touchdown of the game. And good Lord, we needed it. Here we go. All we've got to do is keep them out of the end zone. We do that, we win this game easy. They go underneath this time to Joe Keller, who has been a monster, and he's going to keep being a monster as he breaks every tackle humanly possible. Purdue ultimately has held on to all their timeouts, but they use their first one there to stop the clock at 40 seconds. Bowling has nearly thrown for 400 yards, and after this drive, he probably will be pretty close to that. George Fry can't quite make that interception, but he does keep Keller short of the first down marker. Second and one, 35 seconds. Purdue has now used two timeouts, only one remaining. Bowling's out here running, but he gets hit short of the line again. Bowling lines up in shotgun here. Can he get a first down for his team? He's throwing one deep. We have no one there. Shackleford trying to get up to Garrett. Shackleford cannot get the tackle. And are you kidding me? With 13 seconds left, Purdue, they're tying it up. Hayes and Baker back here to return the kick. This one's going to go to Hayes. Baker's going to try to be an extra blocker here. We need something positive. And honestly, Hayes gets a solid return with eight seconds left. There's a chance. Overtime feels like a thing that we haven't really been to in a long time, but good Lord, we just need something here. McDonald's going to unleash one. He's got a guy, throws up to Baker who battles it away, and if he caught that, that might have been a field goal coming up. Squad needs a little bit of a miracle here. We're hoping for a mismatch, something crazy. We're going to go across the middle to Jeremy Willis who gets hit, but overtime it is. We played it safe, and we got overtime because of it. Overtime it is. Our chances of playing for the college football playoffs might already be gone, but good lord, we're going to try to win this game and keep it up. Lowe trying to get some pressure on the quarterback. They go for a dump off here. Fry can't quite get to him. Bernard Harvey's going to bring down Keller about nine yards later. Can't say enough about Jamal Bowling. He's just been unbelievable today, but we need a turnover. We need a forced one right here, right now. Bowling feeling the pressure. He's running. We got nobody even paying attention to him, and he slides at the five. Our guys know their backs are against the wall. A lot of pressure is going to be in the offense if they can't get anything stopped here. And they don't. It's Mobley who has killed us all game long. Casey Mobley, he strikes again. So here we are in overtime with the ball back. Down seven to Purdue. This is not exactly where we thought we were going to be to start of this game. Second and two. Right across the middle is Jeremy Willis with a great catch at the end of the game. Now he gets a big one here, getting us down to the five. Stewart looking to get in the end zone. This man has just been itching, but it's been Robinson each and every time. Stewart has one guy in front of him and gets stood up. Robinson comes in again. Stewart gas from the previous plays, and Robinson's going to get in for the fifth time on the ground. What a game for Quentin Robinson this afternoon. Now in college overtime, one team goes first and goes second, and then it's a snake. So then we, because we went second, go first on offense for the second overtime. Out here again, McDonald, little QB keeper. We're sliding because we do not want to fumble this late in the game. That's a death sentence. Both Stewart and Robinson in the backfield. Should be a little bit of a wrinkle for the defense here. Stewart holds on to it. Plenty of room up the middle. Bounces off a would-be tackler, and he's inside the five. Stewart with another opportunity to get into the end zone today. It's been tough for him, and they're going to stand him up at the one again. This man cannot get in the end zone to save his life. And who else is coming in after Sean Stewart is gassed? But Quentin Robinson. Looking to get in for the sixth time this afternoon, and he does. This is the fewest attempts, I think, ever for six rushing touchdowns. This dude's insane. We are trying our best to stop Purdue, and this is so weird. They're a three-win team that is just giving us the business. Our guys can't cover them. Bass is going to force them out of the four-and-a-half-yard line, but what are we doing in coverage? It's embarrassing at this point, but it is what it is. Fry and company trying to stop him. We see Owens get him in the middle, but they're now on the doorstep, literally the half-inch yard line. Can our guys get a stop here? 
Bowling sends a guy out to the left hand side. It's like Walton. The gold middle. You're kidding me. He's wide open. Steve Gorman, the tight end, catches that. Our guys are falling asleep, and Purdue is sending us to a third overtime now. Steven Lowe absolutely asleep at the wheel. He's made some great plays today, but that was not one of them. Could have stopped this game right there, right then. But he doesn't do anything. Steven Lowe's got an opportunity and Lowe says, I heard you, coach. I'm making a play. What a play by Steven Lowe. So wait a second. For some reason, we didn't get an opportunity to play on offense. I don't exactly know what's happening here, but we should have absolutely had a chance to play on offense there considering we got the interception, but we're back on defense. Or maybe it's because they ultimately, that was their turn on off. I honestly, I'm confused. I think we should have still had an opportunity to play, but for somehow we've been shafted. You know what? Our defense is stepping up right now. Our guys have got to lock up right here. Get a stop, make it third and 11, make them kick the field goal. Do not give up a first down. Our guys get a hit. Are you kidding me? What a play. Another sack. Finally, <laughs> the defense steps up. We're going to line up for a field goal here. Fourth and 16. This could be huge. Even if they make this, we should have an opportunity to get the ball back on offense, and we should be able to come out here and get a touchdown and potentially win this game. Purdue gets that one. It's up, but it's only three instead of seven. Good. They're saying that's the final. We got shafted. College football rigged the game and didn't give us a chance to go on offense. They're giving Purdue the victory after all of that. They rigged the game against Cascade Valley. This is the biggest scandal in college football history. You've got to be kidding me. Jamal Bowling is your player of the game, 483 yards, six total touchdowns. But they rigged the game, and it's the biggest scandal in college football history. I'm unbelievably shocked. So just to prove that we're not crazy here, we see Purdue scored, Cascade Valley scored, overtime one, overtime two, CVU scores, Purdue scores. We then got an interception because again, Purdue got the ball first in the next one. Then we never got to play on offense and Purdue gets a field goal and wins the game. A scandal. While I'm absolutely floored and shocked, we should have never been in a game this close against Purdue. So you know what? While there was a scandal, we will protest this. We will make sure that the NCAA knows that something absolutely terrible happened to us. We know that we should have never let this game be as close as it was. McDonald goes for 299, has two bad interceptions today. Uh, from the rushing perspective, we see 146 from Stewart. No touchdowns. Six, though, by Quinn Robinson, which is nuts. And then one by Tom Baker. On the receiving side, Minor goes for 118 and a receiving touchdown. The only one of the game for us. Defense, all these guys are bums. Shackelford had seven. We see Mitchell had six. Five of those being solo. From a sack perspective, we had one from Anderson, one from Corey Brown, and one from Nate Ward. Interceptions, we only had one today. It was by Stephen Lowe. And honestly, I cannot believe this scandal happened. But I'm still upset with us giving up 59 points to a three-win Purdue team that now ultimately has four wins. Should we have had a chance to win this game? Absolutely. But when you play this bad, you don't deserve to win, let alone go to the college football playoffs. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys in the next one.